My name is Graham Hamblett. I am the lead distiller here at Dogfish Head Distillery. Uh, I've been here for just over two years. The distillery is here in the brewery for a, a number of reasons, but ultimately there's a saying that good wine starts in a vineyard, well good spirits start in a fermenter. So here at Dogfish Head, the distillery has been able to tap into the resources and 20 plus years of fermentation history of the beer to create a good quality, consistent base fermentation. So essentially our vodka is started with a uh, high quality brewer's grain, uh, brewer's malt, and then fermented with our in-house doggy yeast. So we actually have a direct line from our fermenters directly here to our distillery. So the wash that comes in, roughly around 7.5% alcohol by volume, gets pumped in and the first step it goes through our two 500 gallon stripping stills. The stripping part of it is exactly how all other distillations kind of the same principle uh, and that's based off boiling points between alcohol and other solutions. Everybody remembers eighth grade science that alcohol's got a lower boiling point than, than water. It will actually start boiling at a, and vaporizing around 173 degrees where water boils at about 212 degrees at a higher temperature. So when we take that wash with the 7.5% uh, alcohol in it and start boiling that, the alcohol is the first thing that wants to volatilize and vaporize and come out of solution. Uh, what comes out of the still after the stripping run is what's called low wines. Kind of rough, unclear, something you really wouldn't want to drink straight, but it's going to get further processed. So after the stripping run, you go into what's called the spirit run. And that's really what shapes the spirit into its final product. And if you think of the uh, spirits run as a timeline from start to finish, the heads, which is rich in the methanol alcohols, will come off first. So we try and separate those from the hearts, which is the good stuff. So when you think of it as a timeline, the heads come off first, and then at some point, uh, based on temperature, alcohol content, but ultimately what it smells and tastes like, we'll switch to the hearts fraction. And those hearts fractions will run for a little while, and then at some point some of these other alcohols that are undesirable because they have a bad flavor will start coming off the still, and those are the tails fraction. So again, we'll cut those out and isolate those so we can capture just the hearts. So for our vodka, we'll take that 191 proof spirit, slowly cut it with uh, purified water down to uh, roughly 80 proof. And at that point, we'll do a slight carbon treatment on it just to kind of round out some of the rougher edges and uh, give it a little bit more smooth mouthfeel to it. Um, and then it's pretty much ready to bottle. Gin, um, most people don't realize, is actually just a flavored vodka. Uh, a lot of people think that gin is made from junipers. It's not made from junipers, it's actually flavored with juniper. Our compelling gin, the more citrus forward one, uh, will take that base neutral spirit, transfer it to our gin still, add botanicals to the pot within that spirit, but we also have the addition of a gin basket. Um, a gin basket is essentially a way to delicately extract the flavors and aromatics from whatever ingredient you put in there. So for our whole leaf gin, we were inspired by the continually hopping process found in our brewery for our 60 minute and 90 minute. That allows the, the hops to be showcased in a large amount without being too aggressive. So the process behind that one is a little different than our compelling gin, where once we have our base GNS coming off this, the spirit still at 191 proof, we'll dilute that down to 105 proof and transfer that to a maceration tank. In there, we will load up large amounts of hops in uh, hop sacks, soak those into that base spirit, and the alcohol will pull out the oils and aromatics of that base hop, let that macerate for a couple of days, remove the hop sacks. So essentially now our base spirit for our hop gin, or the whole leaf gin, is a hop-infused spirit. So we'll take that hop-infused spirit, transfer that to our gin still, add our botanical recipes, the juniper, coriander seed, more hops, and then one last dose of hops in our gin basket. So it has been continually exposed to hops during every step of its uh, distillation. Doing something from scratch is always going to be a little more difficult and more steps involved. Um, but it does allow us to have complete control over every step of the way, from fermentation, to distillation, to the following process. Um, it allows us to follow those uh, process step by step from grain to glass. 